I wanted to ask you first of all about the music, about um, the songs that Monica Fred does. Um, what about Don't Want to Hear It? I wanted to know about It Follows, like why you wrote it and what was the motivation behind it. What about, um, you said there were three ideas. Would you say that the dancing um, is kind of the ideal of what you want your the scene to be? It's supportive and everything else instead of the backstabbing like is in uh, No Reason and It Follows and Don't Want to Hear It. and. What is their goal? What are they trying to accomplish? Why do you scream? And why is it so fast? And why can't you understand the lyrics? The way you dress, and the way the heart works, well, not heart. Could you explain to why the people that are in the, uh, the scene, whatever, dress like you? <laughs> and dress like the people in the bands. Why is that? A lot of them seem to dress the same way. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the politics or what, some of the contradictions in, in the scene? Like sometimes, you know, it's, people say it's apolitical, and then on the other hand, you have some political ideas. And why do you think hardcore happened? Can you talk about straight lines? Talk about discord. Why are you doing what you're doing? What, how do you feel about that? And what do you think will happen now? That's one, that's one difference. Say, when people go to the Wax Museum... There's some general idea that made this thing happen. I mean, I know everybody's individuals, and they all think differently, but... What is going to happen to these kids um, when they have to go and earn money to support themselves? I mean, but then how do you justify um, heading up this record company? Say if you had a friend who, you know, was killed in Central America. Don't they have a misconception of being afraid of of um, people involved in the hardcore music scene? Anything else that you can think of? It's kind of like the hippies maybe look at me for who I am, not what I look like. Talking before about the hippies, do you think you're the, the hippies of the 80s then? Some of your ideas are that, you know, non-exploitive stuff like that, and the fact that you are getting bigger, I mean, are you an angry person or? So do you think you're going to go further underground? How will you know when you've reached the point of I'll know. I don't know. A lot of people I know, or everyone maybe, just feel the great uselessness. You just, I mean, you're a human being, and, and uh, it's all so big. You know, the world is so big, and, it's, and the, everything is just so untouchable and unreachable that they just want to do something that they can be a part of and they can they can like mold and they can make because all through their lot you know all through their school they you're brought up and you're you know they tell you all about people who created this and created that you've been given a great you know everything you want uh, an accepted social scene you know the whole alcohol thing and an accepted uh, music scene it's all there for you and uh, People don't want it, and they say, "Fuck it, they don't want that. They want, you know, they want to be part of something." I can tell you that when I got interested in the music, or whatever, like the alternative lifestyle or whatever, uh, it was not hardcore. It was like punk rock, or even actually, it was even new wave. The general idea was like it was basically me and about ten other people decided that we wanted to play our own music and we wanted to do like our own thing and it just it built on from that and uh, there was, Washington had a, was a really strong strong scene and when there was a show it was like an ex it was not just a show it was like a full on you know party a lot of the hardcore stuff is just is fast very aggressive and loud you know music angry music and I think that the dancing it just it re, you know reflects the music naturally, and you just want to move, get going. You know, people just that's like the whole energy thing once again. Uh, the stage diving was just something that uh, we saw in California and sort of emulated. When we used to dance, it was definitely violent, but it was also somehow much more choreographed. Whereas first of all, we didn't go in a circle, which I think is something about that really bugs me. Okay. Uh, and number two, we sort of just weaved in and out, and we worked with each other, and it was not, like, hurting, and nothing, we were pretty, like, 
people, people dance to the music, which has sort of gone away in the last six months. People don't seem to dance to the music anymore. They sort of run around and, you know, be crazy or whatever, which is fun and dandy. But, uh, and so back then it was a lot more choreographed. When you go off a stage and you have, like, friends who are going to catch you, there's a feeling behind that, which is great. Like, a great example is a drink, how we open the doors of clubs. There's no, uh, no overage shows in Washington, no hardcore overage shows at all. Because well, where were you kicked out of clubs? Violence or just aggression or just scared. Or a lot of times we didn't, the bars died. Didn't make any money. Wasn't worth it to them. Why? Not worth all the, all the, all the fucking internet. Because people don't drink. People didn't drink. I mean, some people do, but they don't. They don't. I mean, some, you know, they don't. They, it's not enough. And uh, there's, no, there's not an emphasis on drinking. The emphasis is on the band and the people. It follows. Well, because uh, just the whole the whole thing about when you become how why I became a punk or whatever, and when I became a punk was to escape all the just the bullshit that you know the social scene of high school and just the typical normal stuff. And here I thought that I was like you know because I had become a punk that I was like you know we were all so much above it now and you know that we had to deal with it. And all of a sudden I realized that. You know that social scene is the punk scene now, and it's all caught up to me anyway. You know, and that even though I thought I was escaping it the whole time, I wasn't. It was there the whole time anyway, just a different shape. Sort of like a bitter realization, you might say. You know, tap me on the back. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> all my songs. I write my songs. I mean, I have one thing in mind usually, or maybe a few things in mind, but it starts to apply to everything. When I first wrote, I don't want to hear it, uh, it was just, I mean, it was basically about, you know, just about people talking, like, you know, about how good, you know, how great they were, or how, you know, how they were so together, or whatever, and that kind of stuff, and it was all bullshit, for, you know, for someone to say, like, you know, oh, yeah, I got my shit together, or, you know, you know, it's it's, not, it's a lie, and it's just like, I don't even want to hear it anymore, just, you know, because as we start out, I mean, that's pretty, I mean, to me, the meaning of that's pretty obvious, I don't know, I mean, I don't know what you're looking for exactly. No, I mean, I'm saying every song has, like, I mean, I'm, I get drive, or whatever, I get this, like, the want to write the song with one or two things in mind, it sparks me. Halfway through the song, I start realizing that it meets, it covered a lot of stuff, and two months later, after I write the song, I realize that, it could apply to almost anybody or anything. I'm not about to go. I'm not going to go sell people on my ideas. I'm not going to go out and like try to get people to convert to hardcore or do whatever. Why are you doing what you're doing? Because it's for me, not for anyone else. It's for you know. I mean, it's for other people. But what I'm doing is to get my own shit out, and I'm not trying to convert. I'm not into like selling. That's one of that. I hate fucking organized religion for that. Cause it's it seems like. It seems disgusting to me that someone could, that would sell something that supposedly means so much to you. If I can respect myself and I can respect you or whatever, and then you can respect yourself and respect me, well, then that's two people, and if we can make it four, that'd be nice, and then so on and so on. And it's idealistic, I'm sure, but certainly no more idealistic than for me to go, yes, I'm going to go out and change the world. That's, you know, that's bullshit. It, the world, I can't change, I can't change... You know, this block, I don't know, I might be able to change a block, but I can't change a city, that's for sure. And I, I don't think I can change, I know I can't change a country in the world. I don't even know enough about the world to even begin to even want to change it. I'm not even sure the world's all that bad. The hippies failed, you know. Here they had done, they were like, they're the, you know, the ones who struck out against the whole regular old shit. And, uh... They just settled down and got their careers happening, just like, and I'm sure the punks will do it too. But at least these guys, these kids, can get a spark and just try to like fucking uh, put together, create or uh, mold something on your own, and not be not play on someone else's playground. Well, let's say what used to go on here used to be totally different than what used to go on in L.A. and what used to go on in San Francisco and what used to go on in New York. And now that it's become a more national music, and it is getting more national, the scenes are not that much different, not that much more unique, and they're all becoming the same generic kind of stuff. Well, Minor Threat, uh, we're always, we're playing a game of chicken. Um, the, this game of chicken is where we ride our vehicle as long as we can and jump off before we sell out.